Greetings from Los Altos, California. When I was at IIT Bombay in August, and I was thinking about the opportunity to meet all of you, many of whom I have not seen in the last 50 years, uh, I was just so excited and so looking forward to being at this reunion, uh, which all of you are at and which I'm sharing with you at a distance. Unfortunately, I had a freak accident with my right knee and because the knee got very badly damaged, I'm unable to travel. And so trying to connect with all of you through this video. Many people believe that the early years of our lives are the ones that shape us the most. I think all of us can agree though that we were shaped more by our experiences at IIT Bombay than we were shaped in our earlier years. When we were at IIT Bombay, we learned to survive, we learned to achieve, we learned to thrive. We formed great friendships, we learned to support each other. We learned that on top of all this, almost like an extra bonus, we were also going to receive a great engineering education and a very valuable degree. Now 50 years have gone by and each of us has had a different personal journey. But I think whatever those stories may be, it's fair to say that IIT shaped us and we in turn have made a very large difference to the IITs to India and to the rest of the world. We have contributed in a variety of different ways, some of us in academia, some of us working for larger companies that we've helped to make more successful, some of us started our own companies and grew them in India, and some of us, like me, chose to come to the US, become an entrepreneur, and start my companies here. So what I'd like to do is share my story of my five years at IIT. And of course, as all of you talk to each other, you will have your own stories to share. My first lesson at IIT Bombay began immediately upon my arrival at the start of our first year. It was a complete shock when I saw the tiny size of our rooms and I saw that there were three toilets and three showers for a complete wing. Of course, we quickly adjusted to that. And then we had the shock of our first meal at the Hostel 2 mess. Uh, I learned very quickly why it's called a mess and why the name is so appropriate. And five years later, we were still kind of, sort of in good health. And since all of us are here 50 years later, it proves the point that we can eat garbage and still survive and actually go on to thrive. The third big shock was the commute from central Bombay to IIT. Uh, I would travel typically every weekend or every uh, alternate weekend to go back and visit my parents and meet friends. Uh, this was a, uh, a journey, uh, you know, an adventure of two hours each way uh, involving two bus trips and two uh, uh, train trips on the very crowded Central Railway and Western Railway trains. And then, of course, the one mile walk from the hostel to the IIT bus stop uh, in either direction. Compounding all that were the monsoons. And so we were wet all the time. We were like shaggy dogs, shaggy wet dogs all the time. And I want to particularly thank Juza Vasi and Sharad Wagle for the many times they gave me a trip on the back of their bicycles uh, from the electrical engineering department to Hostel 2. And particularly on rainy days, uh, this was uh, sort of an, uh, it made life that much easier. But that was my first lesson and I survived, as did we all. My second lesson 
in the, in the second year was how to avoid arrest. Uh, you'll find this interesting, but uh, shortly after we started our second year, I teamed up with uh, Deshbir Singh and Sant Prakash Baba and J.P. Taparia and others to create the first radio station at any IIT. We actually built a radio transmitter using electronic valves because transistors were hard to come by in those days. We actually assembled a jazz group and we had a really successful first jazz performance on this radio station. It was a memorable performance, but it was also our last performance because it was 1965 and someone squealed to the Mumbai police that there was an illegal transmitter in operation at IIT Bombay right in the middle of the Indo-Pakistan war that was going on at the time. The police showed up, put me into a room, decided to search throughout Hostel 2, uh, but since I was the main culprit, they wanted to arrest me, and thanks to the intervention of Director Bose, uh, they decided to let it go so long as we promised to shut down the transmitter and not transmit again while we were at IIT Bombay. Now you would think, that we would have stopped all extracurricular behavior after that kind of scary incident. But since we were bored and we had some extra time on our hands, we decided it would be really interesting to design and build and fire rockets on the IIT Bombay campus. So again, troublemaker Deshbhi Singh and I and others assembled the first rockets that had been assembled in India. Uh, we tested the first rocket, seemed to work as expected, and we fired the first rocket up into the air. It went up a few hundred feet, descended gracefully on the uh, Gymkhana grounds, and there was applause from all the students who happened to watch this. Unfortunately, the Mumbai police found out and showed up yet again. And uh, this time, they had no difficulty in tracking me down as the probable cause and the troublemaker. And the same inspector who had wanted to arrest me for the radio transmitter now wanted to arrest me because I had fired a rocket without the appropriate permits. Who knew that it required permits for us to just do a science experiment of designing, building, and firing rockets on a campus? Apparently, those were the rules. So, given the second incident, I found the beginning of a deep friendship with Director Bose because he had to bail me out yet again, intervene one more time, and persuade the Bombay police that this was all a student experimentation on campus and not meant to be some form of sabotage. The Mumbai police agreed to let it go subject to one condition, that any future rockets could only be fired into the ground and not up in the air. And when I tried to explain to them in Hindi, English, and broken Marathi, that the whole definition of a rocket is something that's first fired up in the air before it comes down to earth, was completely lost on them. And so IIT Bombay, I think, holds the Guinness record in terms of being the only place on earth where rockets were fired into the ground and not up into the air. But that was my second year. I avoided arrest twice. My big lesson in our third year was how to become an entrepreneur. All of us would come back from our engineering departments back to hostel two or our respective hostels around three or four in the afternoon after a day of classes. We would be hungry, we would be tired, and we would be looking for snacks. And of course, there was nothing available at any hostel. The closest place where one could get these things were the shops at uh, Vikroli Railway Station, but of course, that was more than an hour away. So, as a service to all our uh, colleagues at the hostel, 
10 of us got together and contributed 10 rupees each to capitalize the canteen corporation of Hostel 2. The mission of the canteen was to simply provide snacks and beverages to students before they actually ended up uh, at 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. having dinner in the hostel mess. Uh, the canteen turned out to be extremely successful and this initial shareholder investment of 100 rupees was repaid uh, many, many times over. Unfortunately, we may have bragged about this a little bit to our other hostel mates. And as a result, when the election for the hostel secretary was being held for the following year, the person who was running ran on a platform of wanting to nationalize the canteen corporation. Now the canteen was working absolutely fine. People were getting what they needed at very reasonable prices. They didn't have to go to Vicroli, but no good idea goes unpunished. So this particular person was elected secretary of Hostel 2. He immediately nationalized the canteen. And a few months later, the canteen was a disaster. Uh, it was neither providing product nor service. And shortly thereafter, it shut down. So it, it taught me that entrepreneurship works and socialism doesn't. And perhaps these were the first seeds of entrepreneurship that were planted in me. And naturally, when I look back at my career 50 years later, I'm really grateful for the experience of Canteen Corp, both when it was successful and then when it failed as a result of this uh, socialist experiment that was carried out after we owned it. For me, year four was how, about how to improve social life on campus. All of you may recall that we had a rather boring social life. So some of us who were no longer uh, able to do things like rocketry or jazz groups on, with uh, radio stations because those could lead to arrest, uh, decided that we needed to sort of raise the level of social activities on campus. And on that platform, I ran for the position of IIT social secretary in my fourth year. And to my great amazement, I was actually elected social secretary. That then led to people asking what I was going to do. And the first thing we decided to do was have the first variety show at IIT Bombay to be performed at the Convocation Hall a two-hour show of music and skits in which I was going to be the producer. And for reasons I still don't understand, I decided that the opening number in this variety show should be a song called Summer Wine, which was sung by Nancy Sinatra wearing, uh, you know, knee-high boots and hot pants. And she was accompanied by a baritone singer called Lee Hazelwood. And we had to recreate this kind of experience as the opening number at, for this variety show at IIT Bombay. I successfully persuaded Victor Menezes, who was in Hostel 8, to play the role of Lee Hazelwood. And after lots of resistance, lots of arguments, and lots of no's, he finally said yes. And he hasn't yet thanked me for the fact that this experience, this stardom that we brought him at IIT Bombay, led directly many years later to his becoming vice chairman of Citibank. I'm sure one day he'll recognize this and will thank me. Now, the bigger problem was the role of Nancy Sinatra. There, there were only 19 females at IIT Bombay, as you may recall. And so we quickly narrowed down uh, to the one person who came closest to having any kind of chance of playing this role. Her name was Aruna Gokhale. And of course, after I discussed it with her, she said no at least 50 times. But finally, we persuaded her to sing, uh, to learn the song, and to perform. 
And then I brought up the whole idea of hot pants and knee-high boots. And of course, that was completely shot down because she thought if she did that, she'd never get her degree. And she also would never be able to get married because, you know, this uh, uh, performance would become blackmail material against her. Uh, so we ended up doing the only known version on the planet of summer wine performed by Aruna Gokhale in a salwar kameez. So if you ever want to see this, uh, I, I don't know if we have photographs of this still in the archives at IIT Bombay, but this is your chance to see summer wine performed in salwar kameez. And finally, in year five, I learned how to make a Russian computer work. For those of you who don't remember, uh, back in the 68 time frame, the Russians delivered their Minsk II computer to IIT Bombay to help support the startup of the computer center. But none of us could make it work because it had no known programming language. The manuals are all in Russian and the Russian engineers didn't know how to make it work. So Sharad Vagle and I and a bunch of others spent many late nights and weekends at the computer center trying to understand the circuitry of this uh, piece of junk. And since they didn't have any programming languages, we came up with octal programming as a way of programming the computer. We then decided to create a digital version of Jana Gana Mana, our national anthem, such that it could be performed on the computer and played back at the convocation hall during the convocation ceremony for the 1969 batch. Since this was a finicky computer that would only stay up a few minutes every day, Wagle and I were at the computer center nursing this Mintz 2 machine, keeping it alive to perform Jana Gana Mana while all of you were receiving your degrees at the convocation hall. I got my degree several days later, partly because I couldn't be at the hall and partly because there was another problem. After the convocation ceremony, I was called to the office of Colonel Nehra, who was then our registrar, who informed me that I had to pay a 900 rupee fine before I could get my degree. Naturally, I was shocked, but he informed me that all of us who had cut classes were being fined one rupee for every single class that we cut. And I didn't realize that we had 900 classes in five years that we could even potentially cut, but apparently his math was correct. And so since I didn't want to tell my parents about this, uh, I was able to persuade him to accept an installment plan in which I would pay the 900 rupees in three or four different chunks. And with that kind of uh, commitment on my part, he went ahead and released my degree. So I did actually get my you know, bachelor's degree certificate a few days later. But that was an experience in itself, learning to negotiate uh, just to get a degree that I had earned uh, because apparently I cut a few classes too many. And so we graduated and in the flash of an eye, it seems 50 years have gone by. When I look back at these 50 years, I think about how much all of us have to be proud of. All of us in our own individual ways have contributed so much back to the IITs by achieving and through those achievements, creating a brand for IIT Bombay and other IITs, that's the envy of technology institutes all over the world. We have taught in academia, we have mentored other students, we have helped larger companies grow, we have started companies, we have created jobs, we have helped build a brand for India, we have helped provide the foundation, the policy foundation, and the, in, the knowledge infrastructure foundation on which India's growth over the last few years 
has accelerated and become something that many other emerging countries are desperate to emulate. So we have so much to be thankful for, but none of this would have been possible without the community that we created in our batch, without the friendships that we formed, without the support that we provided to each other. So we are here, or you are there, and I'm here celebrating with you uh, our 50th anniversary. But my final thought is this. We are still standing. Our journey is not yet over. And while we have contributed a great deal in a variety of different ways over the last 50 years, each of us has it within us to continue making an even larger contribution in the years to come. Let's not just take it easy on the sidelines. Let's keep doing what we have always done, which is to keep thinking, to keep coming up with new ideas, to keep mentoring, to keep supporting others, to keep growing, and to most of all, to keep providing the kind of example that all of us will be proud of and to leave behind a legacy that all of us will be proud of. I am thrilled that all of us have this opportunity for the 50th reunion. I'm sad that I can't be there with you, but I really enjoyed sharing my thoughts and my feelings with you today. Uh, good luck and God bless.